of the probabilities you might remember, some of them we'll work on. We're going to look at words like independent, dependent. We're going to do your addition rule. We're going to do your multiplication rule. Conditional probability, something depends on something else. You probably remember doing that with replacement, without replacement. Um, we, we did a lot of that when we were in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. We did some of that. Um, Algebra 2, we kind of go through this a little quicker because we have to hit the, the ones where you did the 30% chance of rain. If it were you went for five days with the probability that it would be three or less. We spend more time on that in Algebra 2. We do that here also, but we make a table and we take care of it in the table. Um, so we're going to get started into this one. And we're going to work on your conditional probabilities. No, it's okay. It's also one thing back, so that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. No problem. I put it right here. You have to use it here anyway. Okay, conditional probability. And I gave you notes, so check to see if these are in your notes. And embellish your notes, guys. Add to them. All right, conditional probability is the probability of an event occurring given that something else has already happened. It meets a condition. This meets a certain condition. That's why we call it conditional probability. It meets a specific condition. The conditional probability of event B occurring, given that event A has occurred, is written like this. The probability that B occurs given event A has occurred. So conditional probability is making sure one has happened and what's caused the second one to happen, do we affect it or not. Now we say one is independent. A is the independent, B is the dependent. So in your books, I'll tell you where we are exactly. We are on page 130. So for instance, you have two cards, they're selected in sequence from a deck. Find the probability that the second card is a queen given that the first card is a king. Now, here's the thing. Assume that the king is not replaced. You select the king, you look at it, you hold it. You don't put it back. So we have a conditional probability here. Sorry. We're on page 130. 130. 130. How many queens in your deck? Four. Four. How many cards are in your deck once you've selected a king? 51. This is given that this has been selected and not replaced. What if I replaced it? If I replaced my king, I looked at a king, and I replaced my king. You got to pick a two. Then it would be, for a queen, probability of a queen would be four out of 52. See the difference between this one and that one? This uh, one, I'm keeping this out. So I took a, a card away from your deck. This one, I put it back. So this, this second event is dependent upon what happened from the first event. So it's the probability of pulling a queen given that you pull the king. And we have to worry about replacement and not replacement. And you did, you did a few like this before. Sometimes you'd pick a candy and pick a second candy. So you assume you eat the first candy. Sometimes you had a marble. They say put the marble, the marble is replaced. The totals go back to where they were. It depends if you're replacing or not replacing. Another thing we do is we look at a table. This is very popular for probabilities. It says, find the probability that a child has a high IQ given that the child has the gene. This is the independent one. This is the dependent one. So what happens is, the easiest way to do this when you have a chart is to find the given first. Given that the child has the gene, so the gene is present, circle this. That's where your probability is going to come from. And everything we're going to look at is right there. 
so there's a possibility that a child has a high IQ. High IQ, 33 out of 72. Good. See it? Find the given first, and then do the probability. Now, sometimes you work off of a total. Sometimes you work off of the, the separate column. Okay? If I said, find the probability that a child has a high IQ, just this, what would that probability be? 52 out of 102. This is good. 52 out of 102. Okay. Remember, very good. Remember, probability is always part at a whole. So, if I don't care what's given, what's not, what gene is present, what isn't, I just find high IQ total out of my total. Okay? And that would be this one. If I say, find the probability that a child has a high IQ given the gene is not present, what would you come up with? 19 over 30. You find the given first, and then you find the high IQ, 19 out of 30. Okay. So when Wait, we work... A, oh, I'm going to sorry. Oh, go ahead. So there's a higher chance of you being have a, having a high IQ if the gene is not present? Because 33 out of 72, that's better. Than it's almost half. Yeah, and then 19 over 30 is more than half. It's more than half. So... Mm-hmm. Looks like from your chart. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, this, this, is, this is made up numbers? No, this is made from a, a sample that they did. They sampled 102 people, kids, whatever, child, children. They sampled 102 children. And that's a good observation. It, what, if you hear what Darian's saying, Darian's saying a high IQ, given that the gene is present, is 33 over 72. Half of 72 would be 36, so it's a little less than half, half of a chance. If the gene was not present, it's 19 out of 30. Half of 30 is 15. Half of 30 is 15, so that's better than half. Now, the, the thing is, too, when you, when you do this, look at the difference between this number and this number. They only, put, they only have 30 that they sampled in this group that the gene was not present in and 72 in this group that the gene was present in. That's more than double. It's, it's more than twice the amount in, your, in this category. So maybe that has an effect on it, you know, how many they sample. This is where your sample space and how you determine your sample come into play, because that's a really good observation that you made about this part, because you would think it wouldn't work like that. And actually, this one is more that they have a normal IQ, and less that they have a normal IQ. Kind of the opposite of what we would think. Yeah, totally. I, I see exactly where you're coming from here. Yeah. Um, I want you guys to try this part. Off of your chart, use your chart. I don't know if I can get it at the same point. No. Okay, use your chart and find the probabilities that these things happen. The chart is right here on page 130. I can't seem to scroll and find it at the same time. So try those probabilities. Use your use your chart that we were just referencing. I can't seem to move this and that at the same time. Um, you should, but you don't have to. Leave, leave a hole for anybody to get the same answer. That's fine.
study, and, and this brings us to a good point, not every study yields the results that you would like it to. Yes. So what's the difference between the second and third one? This one and this one? The gene is not present given the normal IQ. They reversed it. This one's given the gene is not present. So in one, given the normal IQ, we're this way. Given the gene is present, you're this way. Your totals will be different. Okay, let, let's look at that for a second. Let me erase this. Fortunately, I can't put it on the same screen. Okay, watch what this is asking. This one says, the gene is not present given the normal IQ. So normal IQ is the one we have to do first. This is the one. The gene is not present, 11 out of 50. See it? You're, you're in this row only. So the gene is not present, 11 out of 50. Then this one says, a normal IQ given the gene is not present. So now we have to do this one first. We've got to do this one. Gene is not present. Normal IQ, 11 out of 30. Whatever the given is, this is your conditional probability. Whatever the condition is, has to be met before you can do the second part. The given has to be met first. That's the probability of B given A. A has to be met first. A is the independent one. B is dependent on what you find for this one. So wherever the given is, that's the one you address first. Does everybody see the, the same thing up here? Yes? Yes. Okay. If you're given, that is, is your independent. Do you do the given first? You have to do the given first. Okay, so what's the probability of a normal IQ? Given that the gene is not present? No, no, no. Just a normal IQ. In total? In total. 50 out of 102. 50 out of 102. Is that dependent on anything else? No. no. Right? No. no. So is this a conditional probability? Is this conditional? No. No. So what did you say? 50 out of 102? Okay. This, I'm asking one thing. One thing. It's completely independent of anything else. Then we get to this guy. The probability that the gene is not present given the normal IQ. This one has to be met first. And then this one is dependent upon this. Like Lizzie noticed, there's a difference between the way they worded this one and this one. There's a, there's a difference because your conditional one has to be met first. So we come here, we find our normal IQ, and the gene is not present, 11 out of 50. That's confusing. That one doesn't just confuse it? Cool. Find this first, normal IQ. So, where's your normal IQ? Circle. God bless you. Now, you're only in this path right here, this red one. The probability that the gene is not present, 11 out of 50. Don't come out of that red row. Oh. Stay within that row. Stay within that given. So 11 out of 50. Then the second one says, given the gene is not present, we have to find this first. Now don't come out of this row. We want to know the probability of a normal IQ. 11 out of 30. Do you see the difference? Right? Find the given first. That's what conditional means. You have a certain condition to be met. Like you, your, your folks will say, you say, can I take the car? You can take the car, the probability of you taking the car, given that your room is clean, is probably a lot higher than just saying, can I take the car, right? It's, it's a conditional probability, given that your room is clean. That's got, that's got to get done first. And then we'll talk about the chance of you taking the car, right? So the conditional probability says that one has to be met first.
This one has no conditional probability. Find the probability that the gene is present, 72 out of 102. Okay. These charts are really popular. These charts are very popular finding like different things that are, that are going on. And the last one, did we finish the last one too? A high IQ given that the gene is present. This one has to be met first. So we come to our chart and we say the gene is present. High IQ, 33 out of 72. That one has to be met first. That's the condition. Okay. It's kind of like an if and only if. You got to do that one first. All right. Now let's talk about a little bit about two events that are independent. Two events are independent. If the occurrence of one of the events does not affect at all the probability of the other of the other event. For instance, the probability that I flip a coin and get ahead, given that I spun a spinner and got a three. Will this have any effect on my spinner? No, they're, they're unrelated. The probability of getting my queen, given that I had a king, and not replacing it is conditional. Yeah. This is dependent. This is completely independent. One has no effect on the other. Okay? Two events are dependent if the current if the occurrence of one does affect. This is your given. This is your given. Okay? So let's decide whether these are independent or dependent. You select a king from a standard deck, A, not replacing it. Then you select a queen. I want to know what is the probability of getting event B given A has happened. Is this dependent or independent? Dependent. Dependent, why? Because if you have the king, it lowers down the other part of the deck, which gives you a high chance of winning the queen. Uh -huh, good. It, 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 you didn't replace it. So it changed the number in your deck, which changed the probability of pulling out a queen. That was really good. How could I change this to make this independent? Replace it. If I replace it, don't I bring my totals back to where they were? Right? And now you have no effect on pulling out a queen. The, the, uh, the difference is small, of course, 4 out of 52 versus 4 out of 51, but it still changed your probability. Everybody seeing this one? How about this? Tossing a coin and getting ahead, A, then rolling a six-sided die, die and obtaining a six. I want the probability of getting B given A. Independent or dependent? Independent. Why? They have nothing to do with each other. One can't have any effect on the other. When you flip a coin, what's the probability of getting ahead? 50-50, it's always one half. Does it matter that you spun the spinner or the roll the dice or, you know, did something else, pulled the card? Mm -mm. Completely independent. These are independent. This one, because of this, was dependent. And so you just have to think, does one affect the other? Does this have an effect on it? How about driving over 85 miles an hour and getting into a car accident? Probability of B given A. Independent or dependent? Sorry, what did you say? Dependent. This is dependent because your speed affects car accident rate. Um, if you're going faster, chances are you're more apt to have a car accident. So um, this is like one of those subjective probabilities. It's not something that we can exactly measure, but it's bound to happen. It's got a, a higher chance of having an accident at a higher speed. Okay? So this is a dependent event, even though it's not as measurable as the other ones are. So you guys try these.
take a look at these two and you decide if they're independent or dependent. So what would you say about the first one? A salmon swims successfully through a dam A, and another salmon swims successfully through the dam B. With a probability of B given A. <laughs> Independent. Independent. One, one has no effect on the other. The only thing we might say is, if they swim successfully, that means there's a good, strong chance of survival, but this is independent. How about two? Exercising frequently, that's event A, and having a low resting heart rate. So you, this, is your, your, this is your condition that you have to meet. This one has to be met first before this one. So B, given A. Independent or dependent? This is a dependent one, and it's more like a subjective one. If you exercise, supposedly you have a lower heart rate. Okay. You're better shape, you have a lower heart rate. So we've looked at... Dependent, independent, and conditional probability, one depending on the other. And we looked at the chart, so I'm going to give you some surprise in your book. And you add them about 15 minutes, so you can probably do it right now and get it done. I'm not giving you all the ones I thought I was giving you. Yeah, I changed it. I didn't give you all of them. I just took a few.